Hey guys, thanks for dropping by. In this video, we're going to cover how to memorize numbers, dates, and equations. And we're going to use a memory technique called the numeric peg system. This is a visual memory technique that takes numbers and turns them into visuals. Why? Because the human brain is very horrible at remembering abstract information like numbers. Uh, we're actually very good at remembering visuals. So what I want you to start off with is to memorize one through 10. The one is going to represent visually a pencil. So before we start memorizing uh, numbers, dates, and equations, you've got to remember these first 10 symbols. One is a pencil. Why? Because it has the same shape. Two is a swan. Hopefully you can see the resemblance between the two and this picture of a swan. Again, it's just a visual approximation. Three is McDonald's. Four is a chair. Of course, it's upside down. And some of these visuals you're going to have to like tilt your head or it's upside down. Uh, these are all just visual approximations. We want to start thinking visually. Five is going to be a hook. This might be a little harder, but there's the little curve in the five right there and the top part of the five. Five should remind you of a hook. Six is a cherry. Seven is a lightning bolt. Eight is a racetrack. Nine is a balloon. And ten is a plate and silverware or maybe a bowl and a spoon. Uh, whatever you want, really. These are the 10 that you need to memorize. Now, some of you, if you've taken some of our classes and you've learned some of the memory techniques we go over, we've gone over this one in the past. Um, I want to, that's why I went through it quickly. If you haven't yet memorized these, you can pause the video and kind of review them, but you need to memorize all of these visuals before you start proceeding. And let me explain how, let's take one simple example. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Let's say you have to remember this date, 1492, and the significance of it. Now, the phrase that I just said, <clears throat> in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. That's a common mnemonic that people have been taught. Let's say you were never explo expo exposed, <laughs> exposed to this clever little sentence. Let's say instead you just have to remember 1492, and it's just a bunch of numbers, and you got to remember this is associated with Christopher Columbus and him sailing across the Atlantic. Uh, okay, how are we going to memorize it? You have... 1492, that's a 1, a 4, a 9, and a 2. And visually, we're thinking of that as a pencil, a chair, a balloon, and a swan. So what you have to do is come up with some sort of a story that integrates Christopher Columbus and these four visuals, the pencil, chair, balloon, and the swan. So let me give you an example, and you can just kind of follow along. I do want you to picture this in your mind. It works best if you actually visualize this. So picture Christopher Columbus writing in his journal with this giant pencil. He's writing down his master plan of exploration, and he's writing with this giant pencil. You know, those crazy novelty pencils that are just outrageous. By the way, the reason why we're exaggerating the pencil is because your mind remembers things that are weird. Anything that's exaggerated or unique or out of the ordinary is more memorable. So I want you to picture Christopher Columbus writing down his master plans in his journal for exploration with this giant pencil. And about halfway through while he's writing these plans, his chair breaks and he falls to the ground and as he's staring at the ceiling, he sees this balloon just kind of floating around towards the ceiling. And he has this eureka moment that he is going to sail across the Atlantic in a swan-shaped ship. Try saying that seven times fast. Swan-shaped ship. Um, and imagine the swan-shaped ship can actually fly. <laughs> so, by the way, we're exaggerating all of this. This doesn't have to make sense. It actually is better if it doesn't make sense because if you run this story through your mind a few times, it'll be easy to remember. So again, you'd be picturing Christopher Columbus writing with this giant pencil. His chair breaks. He falls to the ground, sees this balloon, has a eureka moment that he's going to fly across the Atlantic in this swan-shaped ship. And that's how you would re remember the one, the four, the nine, and the two related to Christopher Columbus, 1492. So let's go over another example here. What, what, what if you had to, uh, this happened once we were doing a workshop with a financial institution and one of the researchers there said they had to remember a lot of numbers related to GD, GDP growth in various countries, um, GDP growth and declines in various countries over the past year. So let's say you had an example like 3.5% growth in GDP in Ireland. Okay, what do we have here? We have a three. That's got to be represented by McDonald's in whatever story we come up with. The five, something to do with hooks. Uh, a hook, well, what about Ireland? We have to have something related to Ireland. So how exactly are we going to do this? Well, the three McDonald's, you can picture yourself maybe walking into a McDonald's. Uh, 
the five, we need something related to a hook. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about hooks, I think of pirates. So let's picture you walk into the McDonald's and there is a pirate inside the McDonald's. And now we need something for Ireland. Now, I don't know why, but when I was thinking about Ireland, the first thing that popped into my mind was leprechauns. So we're obviously going to have these two fight over something. Maybe they're fighting over a Big Mac. Now, when I say Ireland, you might think of other things. Um, for some reason, leprechauns popped into my mind. Um, you might think of four-leaf clovers or something else. But the idea here is that we, we're taking these elements and we're turning that into a story. The three, the five, and of course the leprechaun. So I would picture myself walking to McDonald's. There's a pirate there and he's fighting with a leprechaun, maybe over the pot of gold or maybe they're fighting over a Big Mac. Now, there's one element that's missing here that we haven't discussed. What if we're talking about sometimes the number is related to growth and sometimes it might be a decline in GDP? Well, what we have to do is have something that represents growth in our imagery, in our story. So I would picture actually this leprechaun. He's not just a tiny little leprechaun. He is a he starts growing really, really large into a giant leprechaun fighting this smaller pirate just towering over him. So that's how I would remember the growth aspect of this number. So we'd remember 3.5% McDonald's, pirate, a leprechaun, and a giant leprechaun represent, representing growth. And of course, if we had maybe a decline, we might picture something shrinking or something really tiny. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, what about equations, which are a little more complex. Here's the most you know, popular equation of them all, E equals mc squared. But what if you had something more complex? Well, think about the elements of an equation. We have numbers. We've got variables. We have operators. So we need visuals for all of these things. The numbers, we already got that down. Remember this? We could use the numeric peg system for all our numbers, 1 through 10. And what about the variables? Well, the variables are easy. We, you know, x has to represent something visually. To me, X reminds me of an airport, like, you know, the run airport runways um, intersecting. The Y reminds me of a wishbone. The Z, it doesn't have to look like anything. It could just be the first letter of an image, like Z equals zebra. A equals apple. B kind of looks like, you know, something golf-related. So you might picture something golf-related in your imagery. C kind of looks like Pac-Man to me. Or C could represent a cat. Now, what about the operators? The operators are all actions, right? They're things that are happening within your equation. So these would be actions inside of your story that you're coming up with in your mind. So the plus sign could represent things being stacked on top of each other. Minus would be things being you know, stolen or taken away. Multiplication would be things being multiplied, like all these kittens here. The division sign would be things being cut, sliced, or, you know, divided into parts. Maybe it's divided into two parts, three parts, four parts. If you had parentheses, that could be something being hugged or tied together, because that's what parentheses represent. And if you had exponents, that could represent something, you know, floating in the air or flying. So let's say we had five square. Five represents a hook. So I'd picture five, something pirate related, and the two as an exponent, a swan. I'd picture a, a swan kind of flying around in the air pirate is maybe trying to hit it down maybe the swan is attacking the pirate you would picture this weird example and that would actually help you to remember that aspect of the equation of course that's just one part in your longer story if you had a really long equation so if you had slope intercept form y equals mx plus b here are some ideas for how you might turn that into a story you know you take your y you have your wishbone m maybe you assign the m to represent something related to mountains M for mountains also has a similar shape to the mountains you see on your screen. X could be runways. And of course, the plus sign, we would have to have something going on in the story where there's something being stacked on top of something else. And of course, the B, if we assign that to something golf related, we would need something golf related there. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what now? If you like these kind of memory techniques, and this is what we teach at Iris Reading. In addition to speed reading, we teach memorization techniques. Uh, we actually have a speed reading mastery course that I think you'll find very helpful. There's 10 webinars. Each webinar is about 30 to 60 minutes in length. covers the whole gamut of what you need to learn if you're trying to read faster, comprehend, and remember information. So you go to irisreading.com mastery. Here are the videos that are in that course. How to read groups of words. That speeds up your reading. How to reduce subvocalization. Subvocalization is that voice you hear in your head while you're reading. It basically slows you down by making you read as fast as you talk. 
And you can read a lot faster than you can talk. You can read as fast as you think, which is much faster than your talking speed. The third video in this series is how to remember more through spaced learning. It's a very interesting concept for improving your retention of information. The fourth webinar is essential eye training that helps you read faster. Five is learning to read and remember visually. So if you like memory techniques like the one we just covered, this webinar goes into a lot more of those techniques. Webinar no number six in the series is how to sharpen your focus for increased reading speed. So if you have trouble concentrating while you're reading, this particular lesson is definitely for you. Uh, number seven is high speed comprehension strategies. Eight is the most efficient way to speed read the news. If you want to keep up with everything that's going on in the world, this is a great webinar for you. Number nine is advanced speed reading exercises. And number 10 is how to read a book in one day. That is definitely our most popular one in the series. Uh, again, if you want to take advantage of this course, go to irisreading.com mastery. When we first introduced this course, each one of the webinars was $25 a piece. So it's a $250 package you can get for $50. Um, this is exclusively this deal. We are posting this for uh, people watching this YouTube video. It's a limited time offer. It's $50 instead of the $250. And it also includes a bonus PDF on how to remember names in case you're interested in techniques for that. So go to irisreading.com mastery. I hope you found this webinar helpful. I want to thank you so much for watching. I've got my contact information on the screen right there. Also, if you want to connect with me and Iris Reading on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, please do. If you like what we're doing at Iris, please tell your friends about us. And if you don't like what we're doing, tell your enemies about us. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.